wp-get web dev tutorials for all user levels. Okay, so today's tutorial is on these uh, animated borders. Uh, there's lots of ways I've seen to do this. Um, the method I'm using is creating a container, which is around the outside, uh, which is positioned on top of the content. Um, I've then got a clip path, which is only showing the outer edge of that container. And then inside that container, we animate something. So in this case, I've just got a rectangle, which is a spacer going right around in circles. It could be a particle generator, it could be circles, it could be whatever you want that's inside there. So let's have a look at this. So effectively, I've got a border animation. Where are we? Here's my clip the border. So this outer container is basically giving us that clipping. So we've got just a, in this case, an eight pixel um, visible part of it. And then inside that, uh, I've got a spacer widget. And the spacer widget here is animating. It's got a black background and I've got an animation on it. Uh, where are we? So this border animation here. Uh, so I've just got a border animation which is telling it to rotate. Okay, that's pretty much all it's doing. Now, the other thing is you'll notice as it spins, the box for that is actually going above and below. Uh, now, what I found is a strange thing is that when you set overflow on a container, um, it stops scroll bars. But when you set clipping on it, it doesn't seem to stop the scroll bar. So even though this animation that's spinning is clipped within a container, as the edges go above or below the visible part of the screen, the vertical scroll bars uh, become visible. So to do that, um, we have to set the uh, container above that. So this um, clipped container, if we set the overflow to uh, hidden, uh, that stops those vertical borders from happening. So that's just something I, I realized after it was rotating, I was wondering why am I getting these vertical scroll bars when I've got no overflow? Um, but that's just a little trick that I've just, um, or quirk that I've learned today. So effectively, so we've got a clipped container showing the outside eight pixels in this case. Inside that, we've got a, uh, a border animation container. And inside that, we've got a spacer widget, which is spinning. We have a look at the other side. So we go to this white one, um, same deal. The structure is exactly the same, except for I've set the thickness of that border to 30 pixels. And I've got a spacer widget inside here, which is using my border animation number two, which is basically just bouncing it up and down. That's pretty much the difference. So structurally exactly the same, difference is the thickness of the border and whatever's animating inside it. Again, this could be a particle generator, it could be circle, it could be a video, it could be whatever you want, um, as long as it's inside that clipped container, it will work. That's a pretty cool way of doing it. Now, because it's clipped, we don't have to worry about transparencies either. So if I go to this outer container here and I change my color, you can see that the border works against any color because the actual animation that we're seeing is actually clipped. So we're not, I've seen some where they set the background of that container to be the same color as the background of the section that it's in or container that it's in. I think there's a better way because you don't have to worry about whatever the container color is. You can just move your colors there and it's just gonna work. So I think it's a really, really cool way of doing it. So let's head over to how it works. So looking at our navigator here, uh, I'm only going to look at the left container first. So I'm going to look at this outer container, which is basically housing everything. My left container, which is basically this one here, which has my content inside it. So I've got some content, which is my headings, uh, heading and text. Um, and then I've got below that, I've got another container I've called masked border. And I've added these two classes to it. So I've got clip border and call justify center. Now, the clip border is giving me this eight pixel um, clipping around that entire section. So all the internal stuff is visible and there's only a, the only visible part is this eight pixel border around the outside. That's what the clip border class is giving me. Cold justify center is a flex rule where I'm telling it 
inside of that border to set the uh, flex direction to column and the justification to center so that I want this uh, this um, spacer that I've got in here, or this uh, inner effect, I should say, I want that to be centered vertically on that. So that's what that second class there is for, the coal justify center. Inside of that, we have a spacer widget. And all I've done on that widget is told it to be a border animation one class. Uh, I've set the size to 121. You can set that to whatever you want, make it smaller, bigger. We'll make it bigger there. Make it bigger again. There we go. So you can set that to whatever you want. And then in the background, I'll just set it to be black. Make, let's make that the, uh, I don't know, make it a red color. Yeah, we've got a red border. It doesn't go too well with that. There we go. So you can control this sort of stuff within the Elemental UI because it's just standard widgets, which is the cool thing about this. It's so easy. Once you've set it up, it's so easy to manipulate. All right. So that's pretty much that. Now, if I go back to here, so, so stepping backwards through these, I've got a spacer widget, which has got a border animation one, which is basically just telling it to rotate 360 degrees infinitely. Uh, I've got an inner effect, which is just a container to hold whatever my animation is. You don't have to have this, um, but I'm using that so that the class above it, uh, the call justify center, tells it to center this inner effect vertically within that um, container. So that's what that's for. Uh, and then I've got this coal, sorry, this clip border, which is giving me my eight pixel clipping. So pretty straightforward. Now, if I look at the right container, it's exactly the same structure. So even the uh, mask border here, I've got exactly the same classes on it. The only difference here is that spacer widget as border animation two, which is going to um, bounce it up and down. And I should say, and the color of the spacer is, sorry, the size of the spacer again is 121. Um, can make that bigger or smaller. Let's say I make it smaller. So I'll just make it smaller. So we've got a little line bouncing up and down. And it's not doing much at all. So we'd have to change some of our CSS. Yeah. All right, there we go. So you gotta play around with some of the sizing and your CSS that's doing the animation to get what you want. But apart from the animation and the color of that spacer, uh, it's exactly the same structure and giving us a totally different effect. You might note also in here that I'm seeing an eight pixel border on that um, second animation, it's on the right hand side, whereas on, on this one, it's much, much bigger. Now the reason for that is the way I'm controlling that with on a per use basis is using uh, the custom attributes and setting the style for the thickness in this case to 30 pixels. When you do these uh, custom attributes, they don't seem to affect the editor. Um, they, they are visible on the front end, but you can't see that effect in the editor for some reason. So that's why that, that is the way it is. So let's just look at the first one. So if we head over to our site settings and custom CSS, go down to the bottom, got a, so our flex util. So that's the first one we talked about, the coal justify center. That was to set my spacer uh, container into the vertically in the center. Uh, and I've just set it display to flex, direction to column and the justify content to the center. And that centers my widget uh, in that animation area. Um, I've got then my uh, clip border and that is giving my, me my eight pixel clipping around the outside. Um, I'll come back to these variables. So I've set the overflow to hidden and that was because remember I mentioned where uh, over here, if we look at yeah, that, that spin, spins around and when that bounding box goes uh, above the top or below the bottom while I was getting vertical um, scroll bars. Um, so by setting the containers uh, overflow to hidden, uh, that solves that problem. So position it absolutely, get rid of the padding. Um, 
Elemental adds 10 pixel uh, padding to all containers now, so that just gets rid of that. Instead of the top and left, and the width and height of 100%, so it fills the entire space. And then we basically want to clip that container. Now, the where I got that from is over here at this uh, bennettfeely.com uh, clippy. Um, I just got the frame container, uh, not the frame container, the frame clip path. Copied this rule here, uh, put it into my uh, clip path rule here. And I note that all of these are percentages. So 0% through to 100%, that's fine. 25% and 75%, uh, 25%, 75%, 25% vertically, 75% vertically. So what I wanted to do is be able to control how actually how thick that is in pixels um, using variables. So the way I've done that is I've created a thickness variable, which is eight pixel. And I've created an inner, uh, probably can come up with a better word for that, but I've just created an inner, which is the 100% minus the thickness. Okay, so what we're saying here is every time I see a 25%, in this rule that I've just copied, change that to var thickness, okay? Everywhere I see a 75%, change that to var inner. So I've just replaced all of these 25 and 75% with thickness and inner, all right? And that means that if I vary this here, let me just get rid of that there, it's messed up my rules. Uh, if I change this to say, uh, well, uh, two pixels. I've got a two pixel clipping path. Okay, if I change that to uh, 20 pixels, I've got a 20 pixel clipping path. Okay, so I'll leave that back on eight because I liked it there. So that's what this rule does by using a variable um, and using the variables in the clip path, we can change the, the width of that border that's being clipped. Uh, the other cool thing is that we can override this thickness uh, on a per use basis, which we've done with this uh, second one here. We've set that to 30 pixels. All right, so that's pretty straightforward. And then all we've got is in the left-hand case, we've got a border animation um, of uh, border animation one. And all we're doing is infinite over seven seconds, ease in and out and rotate by 360 degrees. So our uh, spacer here, is rotating by 360 degrees over a seven second period. And then just repeating that indefinitely. That's pretty much it. So that could be circles growing and shrinking or particle generators or a video, whatever you want inside that uh, um, clip path um, will work. All right. And then border animation two, which is the second one here. All I'm doing there is telling it to translate to minus 140%. Um, you can do that in whatever you measurement you want. That just worked for me on this. Um, and then back to in the center. So it's from a minus 140, follow it, minus 147% to 147% and then back to minus 140%, 140%. So that's pretty much what that's doing. Pretty simple. Two very, very simple animations. Now, I think it's pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to stick this um, code up in the tutorial so you can use it. Uh, and a link to where you can actually get these clip paths from. And there we go. There's our animating borders. So hopefully that's something that uh, you can learn from. And it's I think it's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, let us know hey, what you think. And uh, look, I'm putting a lot of effort into making these tutorials. And I'd really, really love to get some feedback from people as to whether it's worth continuing to do this. Um, and, or whether it's whether it's just a waste of time. So let me know what you're thinking. Uh, if there's enough people interested, I'll keep going. Uh, if not, then um, I'll move on. Thank you.